Armored Core lore, can you beat Armored Core 1 as White Queen? The name White Queen may not be known by many ravens. He is ranked 10th in the arena, and apart from his in-game arena information, the only other bit of lore about this pilot can be found in the book Armored Core Official Data Book, which shows what this pilot looks like, along with an incomplete parts list of what his Armored Core Checkmate 2 is equipped with. It also has a small bit of information which reads, Specialises in close combat with a sword. His beloved machine, Checkmate 2, is a relatively heavy armoured machine for a humanoid type. It is equipped with a sword on its left arm, and its only firearm is a small pulse rifle, which is powerful but has a small capacity for long range and anti air use. Its fighting style is to take advantage of its heavy armour and humanoid type mobility to evade the enemy line of fire and then approach at close range to deliver a deadly blow. In addition to his face as a raven, he has had the unusual title of chess champion on the network, but like many other ravens, his gender, age and background are completely unknown. And that is really the extent of this raven's history, so why pick them for such a video? Well, after recently looking into the Japanese cover art of the Armored Core Project Phantasma game, as the Armored Core Zui was suggested for a Can You Beat Armored Core video, I thought I would try something similar to get a feel for what I would be working with. I will admit Checkmate 2 was not the easiest craft to work with, being a bulky craft made up of the HD9600 head, the XCH01 core, the AND7001 arms and the LND8000R legs. This bulky AC certainly could not fly about for too long, even if it could take many hits. My issue with the craft is, is with the use of energy weapons, with its generator, the GRDFRX7. You see, using its sword, the LS3033, drains it rather quickly, and the bulky craft meant blade dashing was something more difficult. As for its pulse rifle, the WGXP1000, while it seems to have a lot of ammo, the truth is you need a lot of these to take out larger foes like armored cores and even some MTs meaning it drains Checkmate's energy fast. Close combat style is really the name of the game here with this craft, and even that came with its challenges. As for most foes don't tend to let you get close, nor keep within the range of the rifle, leading to a chase which drains energy, and so Checkmate ends up hiding behind buildings to recharge. Still, before I go on, I will answer here that I did not beat the game with Checkmate 2. In fact, there are two levels that the craft cannot seem to beat, and they are Destroy Floating Mines and Guard Factory Entrance. I will go into detail later on these, as with such a large list of missions to go through, I have decided to only focus on missions that were a struggle, otherwise it would be a lot of getting lost, shoot some NTs, and then finish. I'll start with Terrorist Pursuit, a rather easy mission really, for as long as you can race over and block the access point down in the car park. Then the MT can't go anywhere, and you can just shoot it. However, it's in a moment perhaps being too lax that I tried to blade the MT. This was a huge mistake, as I had been firing off the pulse rifle wildly to damage the MT, only now it had slipped past me, and the chase was on. A chase I was not going to win, as Checkmate 2 and I boosted after the craft, only to run out of energy, meaning I now lagged behind the MT by a lot. Luckily for me, the damage I had already done to the MT was enough that the Chrome Bishop MT on the last floor of the car park was able to deal with it. I have never been happier to see a Chrome Bishop MT. For a more quicker one, the Workerbot Removal. Yes, me and Checkmate 2 match up every generator. Even if I aimed well, it seems the shots will still hit the generator and boom, a lot of lost credits, but we still passed. Guard the freight train was the next hurdle, as with the flying foes I had to take Checkmate up onto the mountain to get a good shot, as the range of the rifle is awful. Still the issue was getting shots to hit, then having enough to take out Wildcat. In the end, after 6 tries, it was done, but this was really due to careful shots. We ended up firing off single shots each time from the pulse rifle to kill the aircrafts with the exact amount they needed, and then concentrated on taking out Wildcat with some blade hits and rapid firing of the rifle until he went down. Prototype MT, another mission where energy was an issue. Again, it's just the range and how much damage these MTs need to go down. Checkmate 2 can do it, but it ended up taking cover behind a building, taking pot shots, recovering energy, and doing blade attacks when chaos got close. Really, it's the speed of the MTs that are the trouble here, 
as Checkmate 2 can't keep close after they fly off or speed away. I admit I was worried in the mission mop up Chrome Remnants with the Devastator, however, after taking cover by the entrance and shooting off some shots at the beast, and then flying up and blading it, it really wasn't that bad as I thought. Destroying Justice was more annoying than anything else. You had to be careful with NG again, so single shots until the shield went down, dance about a bit while NG recharges, and then blade Justice itself. Chrome Uprising was another mission with three chaoses this time, so it was a lot of hiding behind the walls again, as they hopped and dashed about, leading to me taking pod shots, playing them when they got close. Overall, this took me nearly four times. AC Battle, this is the two armoured core fight with Finnir, and they wrecked me over and over again, until I went silly with the rifle. Firing off rapidly when I could, in the end I managed to take them both down even after having to run side to side to try and recover energy while trying to dodge at the same time. Finally, let us talk about the last two missions that really put the wrench in checkmate too. Guard Factory Entrance. There really was just too many small, fast moving planes here. The struggle to even hit was made even harder by the range of the rifle, along with the waves of the foes that keep coming. Blading the small planes proved fruitless, and in the end, after 10 tries, I closed the book on this one. I will say I think maybe it's a skill issue on my part, but this was, to put it bluntly, just annoying. Destroy floating mines, I admit, not as annoying as the last mission, but this was a case of powerful foes and so much being thrown at the AC that it could not take them out fast enough to get through the first door of the level without major damage. In truth, I gave this another 10 tries, and after just managing to reach the second room, I stopped after another fail. Of course, this won't stop me from going back and trying these missions, however for this video I can say that out of 47 missions, Checkmate 2 can beat 45 of them, but this craft cannot beat Armored Core. Defenses damaged. Cannot continue combat.